All right, hello. This is uh, this is uh, Bob, uh, and I'm going to do a um, a video today on how to replace your Camp Chef factory controller with a Savannah Stoker controller. And I'm going to try to do this in a step-by-step -step manner the best I can. Try to show as much detail as I can to make it as easy as possible for those that are have purchased a Savannah Stoker and want to uh, place it on their Camp Chef grill. <clears throat> so, to do this, I'm going to need a few basic uh, hand tools, a Phillips screwdriver, uh, a long uh, screwdriver, a pair of wire cutters. I've got two different screwdrivers, but you really only need one. Um, this is my Camp Chef SE. This is my older one, which is out of warranty. Um, and as you can see, I have the factory digital uh, controller installed in there already. Now, um, one of the very first things you want to do before you start doing anything with the grill is you want to unplug your power supply make sure you do that you don't want to get electrocuted there is 110 volts inside so please be careful I'm gonna set my camera up on a tripod so that I can uh, show a little bit more And one of the first things that, that I like to do when, when doing this process is to remove the uh, temperature sensor. <clears throat> Make sure I can get a good view of that. And as you note, there's two screws here and you can just uh, well actually I tell you what better better yet than that that's there's one other step that we should do first move the camera over here Take your long screwdriver and reach down in here and you're going to see this bundle of wires here. This is your thermocouple RTD sensor wire. It's going to have, from the factory, it's going to have a, a wire tie on it. You're going to need to be very, very careful when you cut this that you don't cut into the wire. Unclip that, let your wire come loose. And then I like to just lay it, lay it to the side. Once we do that, we can move back over here and we can work on the sensor. Remove these two screws. Lift, lift your sensor up and pull some slack enough to where you can feed the uh, sensor to this bracket, this protection bracket. 
and I hang this out of the side. We need to remove the grate. This is a step you could do in advance. And here's where it can get a little bit tricky, but the reason why you remove the grate is so that you can reach underneath here and pull the wire where you can kind of pull it straight. Okay? Get some of that slack out. Now just lay it down and just leave it there for the time being. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move over here to our hopper assembly. And what we want to do is we want to remove the bolts that hold the, I'm going to do as I said, and remove the power plug. We want to remove this screw, this screw, this screw, and one on the back. We want to remove these, and I generally loosen the two on the side first. And then I remove the ones on the end. Sometimes, if I'm just working it here, sometimes I'll just take one of these out because it will it will slide down far enough for you to get in there to do that, but I'm gonna take it all the way off. And I usually take that and all the screws, put them inside this and set them, set them aside. Now we need to remove the two screws that hold on the factory controller. I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to try to get the best possible picture I can of this. Hopefully we can... So what we're going to try to do is we're going to pull this back just far enough to where we can... This, this top connection right here is the RTD sensor. You can see the wire right here we're going to unplug that and just just let it fall the next thing we have to do is we have to disconnect all the connections from the controller um, to do that I'm gonna try to get my camera under there where you can see um, exactly you know what it looks like um, it's not gonna be very easy to film disconnecting them uh, it's it's not really a one-handed job and I my tripod I can't get underneath there so um, I'll try to get underneath there and do a quick shot of it and then I'll, I'll pause the video and then we'll come back okay we're underneath here all your connections are gonna have letters on them unless they're wore off like mine and I had to Take a permanent marker and mark on there but you've got c which goes to your your fan you have a which goes to your your igniter hot rod and you have b which doesn't look much like a b up there but 
that goes to the auger motor and then you have the black and white which is your power so those are the four connections that we're going to disconnect and then the this is was our RTD sensor plug that we disconnected and is hanging down here once we get these four connections the controller will come out and then we'll start replacing with the Savannah Stoker trying to see if I can get in here and get a picture you can see the hole where the thermocouple wire has to come through and the reason why we remove the grate is to get access to where we can try to pull it straight through because it does have a connector on the other end and sometimes getting it through that hole uh, can be just a little bit difficult so we're going to we're going to do that right now came through that side pretty easy and came through there pretty easy. We remove the factory RTD sensor. Okay, now I'm going to talk about These, uh, the Savannah Stoker comes, at least when I purchased mine, comes with this uh, four inch sensor. Um, the controller itself is not compatible with the factory sensor, so you will have to change it out. Um, and this sensor will work fine and actually will give you a better grate temperature if you do not use the jerky racks. If you intend on using the jerky racks, you're better off to obtain a seven inch sensor like the factory one. And the reason for that is when, when this uh, jerky rack is installed, this sensor sits behind it way down low something about like that and it this this acts like a big heat sink and it can affect uh, it throws the temperature off which you could calibrate for that but it acts like a big heat sink and the hotter the grill gets the more this heats up so uh, through all my testing and trials I found the longer sensor um, to to work better because it sticks up uh, much much higher almost to the top and the actual sensor on all these sensors is right up at the very tip so take that for what you will if you're going to use jerky racks I would um, uh, maybe inquire about the longer sensor before you get it or either purchase an additional one these things are not very expensive you can get them on amazon you can get them from smoke daddy ink they so the ones from smoke daddy actually comes with a, a disconnect to where you can disconnect it it's kind of nice uh but these are a 1000 ohm um rtd sensor all right so we're going to kind of go in the reverse order and I will move the camera back over here and we will uh, start putting in the new sensor.
this particular sensor that that I purchased only has one screw. Uh, some of them have two, some of them have one. This particular one only had uh, one screw. I haven't really found it to be uh, any an issue. screwdriver just helps you uh, work them up to where you can grab a hold of them. Once you grab a hold of them you can pull the excess wire. What I like to do then is I just uh, drop this wire and just drop it straight down beside the auger tube box and just uh, just let it hang there and then just drape the excess over the back. Now we're going to need to, I guess I'll talk for just a minute about the actual, the way this controller is going to, I don't know if y'all can see that, I think the light, let me see if I can turn around the other way, maybe the light will be better, yeah that's a little bit better. So this, the, the adapter and the, and the plate for the uh, camp chef, you're going to get, you're going to get two different pieces. You're going to have, this is the actual plate with the controller, and then you're going to have this spacer, which uh, gives you the necessary clearance to mount it to the uh, camp chef. Um, your grill probes plug in up here to terminals one and two, right here in the back. That's when the RTD sensor is going to go right there. If you ever forget, for any reason, what wires go to what, you can see it right here on the on the side. Purple is your ignition or igniter wire, hot rod, whatever you want to call it. Fan is orange. Auger is red. Okay, and then you got your black and white wires is your is your hot. Uh, these are color uh, coordinated connectors, which is nice. There's your purple, there's your red, there's your orange, and there is your fuse, 5 amp fuse, and your black and white. So I'm going to get get this uh uh, mounted and set up and then we'll come in from underneath and then I'll show you uh, once the uh, connections are made okay one other thing that I uh, wanted to mention before you start hooking up the actual connectors I like to find me a small table or something I'm using a, a little small trash can but you can use whatever you want uh, to lay the controller on um, I reached my arm up in here and pulled out the 
RTD sensor wire and I am going to need my screwdriver and we'll just loosen up loosen up these terminals here these are the two up here on the top left if you're looking from the back and slide slide these underneath and then tighten them down don't over tighten them but get them really good and and snug okay and then we'll just we'll put all of our wires and kind of hang them through the hole there and we will put this up here Screws started. Move this out of the way. I don't know if you could see that. <laughs> I just uh, attached it uh, with the two screws. So I'll come back underneath uh, once I get it all connected. Okay, I've made the connections. Here is your, this is coming from your, from your fan. This is uh, C, which was orange. Uh, the purple right here which was A, that's your igniter. The red, which was B, is going to the auger. And your black and white here is your power. If for any reason you ever forget, there is a chart on the back here that has the colors and where they go to. It's very, very simple to figure out. Uh, one other note, pull up your slack. As you see, I laid my RTD sensor wire up here and I pulled up the slack so that the wire doesn't get down in here and get in this, in this fan. Make sure all your other connections, there's another fan up here on your auger motor. Make sure no wires interfere with that. Um, you can use a tie wrap if you would like to tie them up. Um, and then once you do, once you make those connections, uh, you're done. And we'll put the bottom uh, cover back on and we will be done with the installation <clears throat> so uh, once we put the bottom cover on uh, we'll put the grill grate back in and we will be done with the installation of the Savannah Stoker controller on the camp shift. It's really pretty easy. Uh, it may seem daunting at first, but it's, it's really very simple. Just follow a few basic directions. I'll do another video on startup, um, running, and um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.